Okay, so I applied to 200 cybersecurity jobs as an experienced professional with six years of experience, and the results might surprise you. So the main goal that I had was to see how competitive the cybersecurity job market is, not only for entry-level cybersecurity folks, but also for folks who have years of experience, especially those who are also in their mid-career and are potentially looking to make a switch to a new role, but Obviously, with the way that the job market is, it's very daunting to even consider looking for a new job right now, whether you work in cybersecurity or tech in general, and of course, how AI is impacting the job market. And we'll also have a special guest on this video giving some advice on how to stand out in the job market and really good tips on your overall job search. So be sure to watch until the end of this video. But just a little bit of background about myself. I graduated in 2019 with my bachelor's degree, and my first job out of college was as a cybersecurity analyst. My starting salary was $115,000 per year in the New York metro area. That is a lot of money, but of course, it is New York, so rent is really expensive. But another goal of this experiment, I guess you can call it, is to see whether or not it's still possible to even get a six-figure job out of college, specifically in cybersecurity or tech in general, especially if you guys have seen the statistics. But the unemployment rate for college grads, specifically if you're between ages 22 to 27, is higher than the national unemployment average in 2025, which is a huge increase from 2019 when I graduated. And the main reasons for this are because of AI automating a lot of jobs and removing a lot of entry-level jobs, specifically on the career ladder. And of course, something that is a universal problem with college degrees in general, and that is the fact that a lot of times they don't actually prepare you with the skills that you need for the job that you are going into after you graduate. Okay, so that was a huge ramble, but essentially I applied for these 200 jobs and obviously my goal is not to take away a job opportunity from someone else. And my main goal was just to see how many interviews I can get based on these 200 applications I sent out. Now I've made a lot of videos on my channel on how I basically go about my job search process, but for the most part, I avoid big job boards like Indeed, LinkedIn, monster.com, any website or job board that typically is known for having a lot of ghost jobs. And if you don't know what a ghost job is, this is essentially when companies post a job listing that actually doesn't have a job to back it up. A lot of times they're posting these jobs to get candidate info or just to see how many qualified candidates are out there or even candidate contact information for future reference when they do have a job opening. Or even sometimes companies are just making these fake ghost job listings to make it seem like the company is still growing when it is not. So. Yes, a lot of HR departments just create ghost jobs and they never have any intention of actually filling the jobs, which is really, really messed up. And that is why I typically only stick to tech job boards. I'll put on the screen the ones I recommend, but typically I like builtin.com, startup.jobs. YC is also a great one if you're interested in startups. Untapped is another good one, but basically job boards that are tech specific and ones that are a bit more niche. And typically these also have less candidates applying to them. So imagine you're a company and you post a job on Indeed and you get 10,000 resumes in a week time span. First of all, there's almost a 0% chance that your resume is, is ever going to get seen by a real person at that point. And not to mention the fact that there's just so many bots that use these bigger platforms. They just auto apply to any job, even if their resume has nothing to do with the job listing and their skills and experience are not relevant at all. So just avoid the big job listings and it'll save you a lot of headache because I know applying to jobs, especially if you're catering your resume towards certain types of job listings, is going to take a lot of time. So you really wanna pick and choose your battles and only apply to jobs on job boards that actually have good quality jobs. Okay, so from then on, within a six week period of time, I applied to 200 jobs. This was basically around 35-ish jobs a week. So applying to about five jobs a day, I think this is pretty doable for anyone who is currently in a job market or even if you're currently employed and are just looking for a new job. I think just sending out five job applications a day is a really, really great start because then you can still balance whatever you need to do along with your job search. But if you are someone who is really urgently looking for a job, then personally, I'd recommend applying to 20 to 30 jobs per day. And again, make sure they're not just the random jobs on Indeed or Monster.com. Even LinkedIn jobs can sometimes be a little bit iffy, but my recommendation for that is if you do apply to jobs on LinkedIn, then the biggest thing to look out for is if the hiring manager or the recruiter also lists their LinkedIn profile on the job listing. I've actually seen a success story about this specifically, but someone basically applied to a job on LinkedIn and saw that there was a hiring manager who was listed on the job listing for posting the job. And then after they applied to the job, they then reach out to the hiring manager and basically wrote them a nice LinkedIn message, told them they applied, wrote like a little one liner about their experience and their background and that was basically it. The hiring manager then applied and was like, hey, thanks for reaching out and, and looking forward to reviewing your resume. Now, you might not think that a message like that makes a big difference, but it really does. Most people don't take the extra mile to thank someone for a job listing or an opportunity. So it really does make someone remember your name if they come across your application. And basically, long story short, this person ended up getting hired for that specific job. And I'm not saying that it's only because they reached out. I'm sure they interviewed very well. I'm sure they had you know a lot of relevant experience and skills on their resume. But again, it didn't hurt that that extra step made that 
that recruiter or the hiring manager remember this person's name while they're looking through, you know, hundreds of job applications and resumes. But another way to break into cybersecurity, if you're just starting out, is to first start your career in IT and then pivot into cybersecurity once you have technical experience. This is a very popular way I recommend because typically there are just more entry-level IT jobs compared to entry-level cybersecurity jobs. The course I recommend for this is Josh Matacor's IT course, and I've done interviews with his students. I'll link one down in my description where someone with zero technical IT cybersecurity experience was able to get a job within basically a month of completing this course. So I highly recommend checking that out. IT is one of the biggest areas in tech that overlap in cybersecurity in terms of skills, in terms of tooling. If you've been trying to break into cybersecurity and haven't had as much luck getting an entry-level job, consider starting out in IT first and then pivoting your way into cyber. I also have a discount code for the IT course, also linked below, and I believe there's also a free intro to IT course that you can take as part of the full certification program. Okay, so after these six weeks of applying to 200 jobs, I ended up getting four interview requests. Now, personally, if I compare this to back when I was seriously applying for a cybersecurity analyst and a software engineering jobs in 2022, I probably applied to around 60-ish jobs back then, and I probably did interviews with around 10 to 12 companies. So personally, I do think that the chance of you hearing back from a company, even if your resume is really relevant to the job listing, it can still be really hard to get a call back, and that is because of one of two reasons. Okay, so reason number one, let's say you have three to five years of experience and you apply to a cybersecurity analyst job that is asking for three to five years of experience in the same exact niche, an SOC analyst. You think your resume and your background, your skills are the perfect fit, and then you send in your application and you hear crickets. One of the biggest reasons for this, not only because there are probably hundreds of thousands of people applying for the same job, but it's also because of the fact that in the past few years, there's been so many rounds of tech layoffs from big tech companies to smaller startups. And this means overall, there's just more candidates in the job pool right now compared to companies that are hiring or filling for a role. Now you can probably already guess what happens when someone with 10 years of experience is laid off from a role and maybe they find that it's taking too long to apply for more senior level roles that fit their exact experience, maybe for a job listing that is asking for seven to 10 years of experience. So instead, this person is also applying to jobs and roles that are asking for three to five years of experience, just so they can get out of the job market faster. Everyone has bills to pay, so it's just generally a very urgent time. And most people wanna get hired as quickly as possible and are willing to take a title or a salary cut if it means having you know stability and a steady paycheck, which is very reasonable. Companies see this and they're like, hey, there's people with seven to 10 years of experience applying to our job listing that's asking for three to five. Now, if you're a hiring manager and someone with double the years of experience is willing to apply for the job and accept a lower salary compared to the salary that they're actually worth, then nine times out of 10, you're probably going to take that candidate over a candidate that just meets all the requirements. And not to mention that because of layoffs, a lot of people are now also considering pivoting into different areas. And if you guys haven't seen the future of jobs reports from the World Economic Forum that was released earlier this year, cybersecurity is one of the only hard skills that you'll see on that list, of course, besides AI, that is still a growing industry. Most of the other skills on that list are things like leadership and soft skills. So in general, the hard skills is really going to be focusing around AI and machine learning and the cybersecurity and network security. Also, because of this, a lot of technical and non-technical folks who may have been laid off and are looking to make a career switch are now moving into cybersecurity. And this also makes it in general more competitive because there are candidates who may have very colorful, diverse backgrounds that could very much benefit a company in a cybersecurity role that are also now applying to these job listings that, that you may be applying to. And of course, not even to mention AI and how it's replacing a lot of entry-level jobs, which I've also already mentioned in this video, but I won't go too deep on that since I know all of you guys have probably heard this spiel already, but let's hear from a cybersecurity professional who you guys all know about their thoughts on the overall cybersecurity job market and how you can stand out and actually get hired. I'm super excited to have Unix guy collab with me on this video. So based on your experience, what are the top three things to have on your resume to get you noticed by hiring managers? So the top three things on a cybersecurity resume that will get you noticed the most are number one, is if you actually have the experience that they're looking for. For example, if they are hiring for a SOC analyst and you've been working as a SOC analyst for a number of years, then this is the single most important thing that you can have on your resume. Now, if you don't have that and you're just starting out, then the next best thing that you can have on your resume is to have the actual skills that the job is looking for. So if you go back to the SOC analyst example, if in the job description they list that they use tools like Splunk or they automate certain tasks using Python or they use a certain threat intelligence platform, if you have done practical hands-on training or projects that uses these tools that they are asking for, then this will be the second most important thing in your resume because it will communicate to the hiring manager that even if you don't have commercial experience, that you can actually do these things because you've done them in a practical hands-on lab. 
Now, the third most important thing on your resume is honestly the flow of your resume. For example, when I look at your resume, I need to know that you're someone who's targeting cybersecurity jobs. So everything in your resume should be about cybersecurity. Now, this is a problem if you're someone who's changing careers and you've done other stuff, that's fine. You can summarize that in your experience section. But on your resume, I need to see that you're actively studying for cybersecurity, that you've done practical hands-on training, and that you're on a journey to learning cybersecurity, which can be easily communicated if you've actually done proper training, because that training and the description of that training will include the skills that the cybersecurity market is looking for. So as a hiring manager, we understand that you're serious about a career in cybersecurity. You've mentored so many entry-level cybersecurity folks who've gotten job offers. What do you think makes the difference for them versus someone else who's been trying to break into cybersecurity but hasn't had any luck? Honestly, after mentoring so many people and after seeing so many people who have successfully landed their first cybersecurity job without any experience, is that the people who successfully land jobs actually follow proper roadmap. For example, Sandra, you have a lot of roadmaps on your videos, and so do I. The people who succeed, they actually continue to study and learn, even when things get a little bit hard. For example, let's say they start off with something like the Google Cyber Security Cert or CompTIA Security Plus. That's fantastic, and it's a challenge on their own. However, those who succeed, they continue learning. They start tackling intermediate level certifications. They focus on practical hands-on skills. Whereas the individuals who unfortunately don't reach their goal, usually they spend all their time on beginner level certs. So a classic one I see on my Discord is when someone tell me they've been applying to cybersecurity jobs non-stop for the last two months, and then they decide that the market is bad. However, when I actually look at what they've done, you will see that they've barely scratched the surface. They'll have things like A+, Security+, sometimes CCNA and Google Cybersecurity Cert. Those are fine starts, they are an okay starting point, but they are not a career plan. A career plan should see you progressing into intermediate level certifications and continuing to learn until you reach your goal. None of that, I want to do one training course and just sit back and be disappointed. It doesn't work that way. Some people will land jobs with just one training, but that shouldn't be the rule. Instead, your plan should be to continue to learn until you reach your goal. And by learning, I don't mean chasing the next flashy class or the next free training somewhere that's an actual steal. Instead, follow a proper structured roadmap that's proven to lead people into landing jobs. And no, it's not easy, but it's possible if you actually want it bad enough. Gotcha. So where do you see cybersecurity hiring trends? What are going to be the best or most popular cybersecurity roles to break into in the next few years? Cybersecurity hiring trend, I really like this question, but unfortunately my answer will be disappointing to a lot of people. So the answer is not artificial intelligence, it's not AI, you are not gonna AI your way into the cybersecurity field. In fact, the hiring trends of today are not so different than the hiring trends of 5 years ago or even 7 years ago. The trends as they stand today is that cybersecurity is still on a growth trajectory. Now, what this means is that more organizations are obliged to hire cybersecurity professionals. This is because of increased regulations, increased fines, things like the GDPR, things like healthcare regulations, and so on and so forth. So companies who are medium in size, they can no longer afford to not have cybersecurity professionals. Now, what this means is that there are simply more jobs in the market. Now, when I say this, unfortunately, some people think that this means it's easy to land a cybersecurity job or that there will be zero unemployment, that is not what I'm saying. Cybersecurity is still a professional level job. It's not a low skilled job, which is a good thing. It means that it will pay you a lot of money once you land that job. But what this also means is that you'll actually need to work hard to land that first cybersecurity job. Once you land your first cybersecurity job, then things get a lot easier because you'll have proven experience. But the good news is there are actually more cybersecurity jobs. Now, I have seen an increase in GRC, which stands for Governance, Risk and Compliance, simply because more organizations are a little bit more mature. They understand the big picture and they understand that they need a little bit more than firewalls and penetration tests, which is a good thing. It means more jobs for you. The other trend or the other thing I'd like you to focus on, especially if you're a beginner, is that combine GRC skills with something like SOC analyst skill or defensive skills. The reason is, as I said earlier, more medium-sized organizations are hiring cybersecurity professionals but also small-sized organizations. 
Now, the problem with these organizations is that they can't afford to hire specialists. So chances are you'll be hired with a broad job title that says cybersecurity specialist or cybersecurity analyst. That title is so broad and usually means that you'll be more of a generalist. So you will be expected to know a little bit of GRC, a little bit of SOC analyst, but you'll also be expected to have a good level of communication skills so you can work with other teams. Small companies and even medium-sized companies, they can't afford to hire a team of SOC analysts or a team of penetration testers. You'll more likely see this in bigger organizations, however, in smaller organizations and even medium-sized organizations, Chances are you'll be more generalists, and therefore, as you're learning, be a little bit more open-minded and broad with your approach. All right, thank you so much, Unix Guy, for joining me for this video and all of your advice for the audience. If you guys are currently trying to break into cybersecurity, Unix Guy has awesome resources and cybersecurity career roadmaps for basically every area in cybersecurity, and I'll link his channel down in my description for you to check out. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully, this was helpful and give you some insights into the overall cybersecurity job market, and also from sharing my own experience from someone who has worked in cybersecurity and how that job search process could look like, which again is very different from pre-AI and the COVID era compared to today. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Generally, I post videos every two weeks now, but if you guys have any video topics you'd like to see from me in the future, let me know. Don't forget to also stay connected on LinkedIn, Discord. I also recently started posting on TikTok if you guys prefer that platform. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!